there are days where I have, and this is because I love you, my viewers, there are days where my job, especially speaking about these issues, um, there are disincentives. I get demotivated. There's nothing to come sit here to talk about the issues because one, you'll be vilified, especially even uh, now that you are an ever. And I'm saying this clearly, an ever, because I've said, I've heard people say, because he's an ever and the way he's bashing government, he's an NDC, and then you have, you've become a target necessarily when nothing, absolutely nothing even drops into my pocket as a journalist, uh, whatever, from whoever it is that they, they are talking about. My point here is that today we're dealing with international data and impunity for crime against j journalists. Second November, it says set aside to do that. We'll, we'll watch a video, but my guest I hear, Pius Asiedu, um, is a reporter at Global News Watch. Christopher Ticho is a reporter here at TV Africa. Thank you very much, guys, for joining us. Thank you. Uh, he's going to be telling us a story. Uh, you also have a story, right? Do you have a story? Uh, yes. Uh, there were stories uh, during COVID-19 when we were going around. There are a lot of stories to tell. We, to take a watch uh, of this video, when we come back, we'll talk about uh, something he's also gone through, and then uh, we'll have a quick conversation on that. Take a watch. We'll be right back. In December 2013, the United Nations General Assembly proclaimed 2nd November as the International Day to End Impunity for Crimes Against Journalists. The date was chosen in commemoration of the assassination in Mali of Claude Vuitton and Gicheline Dupont, two French journalists, on 2nd November 2013. The EU is actively engaged in protecting the independence and safety of journalists as a crucial component in the proper democratic functioning of its institutions and member states. Nevertheless, in recent years, an increasing number of attacks and threats against journalists have been reported and documented in Europe and Africa as well. In Africa, precisely Ghana, there have been numerous cases where journalists have been subjected to assault and some even facing their untimely death. An investigative journalist, Ahmed Hussein Swale, who had collaborated with BBC, was shot dead on Wednesday, 15 January 2019, near his family home in Accra, Ghana. According to the police, they believed he was assassinated because of the nature of his work. His undercover reporting had exposed trafficking, murderers, corrupt officials and high court judges. He worked with Tiger Eye, a highly secretive team led by one of the most famous undercover journalists in Africa, Anas Arimeyao Anas. journalist Samuel Kwame Adoba was also a victim of military assault on Friday, April 10th, 2020, while he was on assignment to report on the lockdown situation in Kasencho, Accra, Ghana. According to reports, he passed a first military checkpoint after showing the guard his first card. Minutes later, he was hit over the back of the head by another uniformed soldier and beaten while lying on the ground. Despite protests from people nearby that he is a journalist, the soldier continued to assault him and purposefully smashed his mobile phone before driving away. Again on Wednesday, August 12, 2020, two reporters also working with media general subsidiary company TV3 were attacked by persons believed to be military men. The two reporters, Stanley Lee, Blehu, and Joseph Armstrong, narrating the incident, stated that one of the soldiers used his boot to hit the chest of Stanley, smashed his camera, and took his phone. The incident happened while on their normal reporting duties at Tema Station in Accra, Ghana. CTFM's reporter Caleb Koda was also assaulted by four national security officers. I don't even know whether to ask you how are you, how are you doing? No, um, look, when I do this, I feel pain in my back, my side hurts, and anytime I, feel, I receive calls from people, the whole episode plays back, plays back in my According to report, he was harassed and arrested after he was seen filming the premises of the national security. 
the recent assault happened to Takradi based Connect FM broadcaster Eric Nana Gentua, who was abused at a popular restaurant on Thursday, February 3, 2022. He was beaten by five police officers for taking pictures of some suspects in the company of the police officers. The suspects are believed to have killed a returnee from abroad two years ago in the Western region. Well, that's a summary of what happens and the kind of job we do here uh, for fear that whatever it is that you see, the next moment, when I've, I've been here, the next moment I get calls that your guest that left your, uh, the, your station, your set, is on another station saying, that ever boy that was paid by NBC, is, we, you see what we do. I mean, some of these things, and that's why some of these jobs, I don't know why we are still doing I used to practice as a journalist. Yes, because that's what I've been trained for. So ah, uh, okay. For me, I'm ready. I'll be retiring very soon. I mean, this job clearly it doesn't. Uh, but that's my side. Pius Sesiedu is a reporter at Global News Watch. Christopher Ticho is a reporter at TV Africa. What happened to you? Why are you using crutches? Uh, so my incident happened on the seventh of December, 2020, on the election day. So we've gone round in the Abukuma Central constituency. Uh, seeing going around reporting on the election so after everything we went to the coalition center to at least find get a final result of the parliamentary elections uh, results yeah, so when you got there it was about 12 a.m where one of the uh, electoral these people uh, i don't know presiding people mm -hmm. came with his report. After everything, you have to uh, submit uh, your report to the presiding electoral officer for mm. him to also put it, uh, collate it, and then give his final result. So that was where, uh, when he brought his, there was a mistake, a mismatch from either of, uh, from one of the um, polling agents, the MPP and then the NDC. So it became an argument that he has, you know, changed the results in favor of the NDC. So they were kind of not understanding. By then, the MPP polling agent had gone home. So they made a request to bring him back so that they could resolve it. So that was how it started. That was how it started. So around 2 a.m., we didn't know where a certain guy came from. He entered into the coalition room. Meanwhile, the collection room was at the uh, Mataiko police station, Mataiko police barracks. So he came in. For me, I didn't see him initially. He came in, and then they had some arguments after the first one with some NDC people, because by then the MPs, the two MPs were there, the incumbent and also the NDC uh, parliamentary candidate was there. So when it, when the guy entered, the NDC people maybe they knew him. So they wanted to, you know, heckle him, as in they know what the reason why he has come there. So they are not going to give him a chance. So with that, it became a banter. They were kind of fighting, pushing each other, pushing each other. So the people rushed to him. That was where he also uh, removed his pistol and then fired a gunshot. He fired the first one into the leg of one NDC guy, and then. I was at the police station. Not the police station. Inside the police barracks. Inside the police barracks. Yes, somebody came was, with a pistol. Yes. It and was there was a, a scaffold and the, then he yes. shot the leg of someone. Yes. By then we were in a church room because okay. what were you doing there though? I was a reporter by then. Okay. So yes. you were just reporting on the procedure? Yes. So I was taking video of what was happening. So the moment the first gunshot came, I have to put back my camera and mm. then run for a cover. So in the quest of me finding the cover, under shots landed. By then, the room, you know, it was more or less like pandemonium. Everybody wanted to, you know, run for a cover. So when I got to the case uh, gates, by then, because of the COVID, there was a soldier man at the gate. So anytime that you come in, if, without, if you are without an accreditation, you not be allowed to enter. So there was a policeman at the entry of the gate trying to, you know, uh, see to the situation as to who comes in and who and uh, goes out. So by then it was a metal gate, it was locked. So when I got to the moment I got to the gate, I heard pa, I fell. I fell. 
before I could check, my there was blood oozing from my leg. Oh. And yes. So what what it means is that was it a metallic gate that hurt you or it was No, it was a gunshot. He fired the third shot and then it got my leg. Yeah. So he he was was it do you think he was aiming at you? Not necessarily. I don't mm. think yes. Mm. Because it was I'm sure maybe because of the number of people that rushed to him, he was also trying to secure himself. Mm. Yeah.